recording. And recording. Right. So continuing our examination of our client, following on from postural assessment and also checking pelvic alignment, we would use what we call a sit and reach test as a mechanism not just for checking overall flexibility and whether they can reach the toes, but much more importantly as a way of assessing four posterior compartments. Uh, one being the calves, one being the hamstrings, the lumbar spine and the thoracic spine. So the first thing to look for is to see whether the client can sit comfortably with their knees extended. If they're flexed and they're having trouble to getting them towards the couch, there's the first indication of possible tightness in the posterior compartments there, particularly the hamstrings. When we instruct the client, we must ask them not only to reach towards the toes, but also to dorsiflex, in other words, to draw the toes towards them um, to see how tight the calf muscles are. So Jade, can you just lean forward and just reach above your toes? That's fine. Okay, so we'll be fairly quick here so that we don't leave Jade in this position for too long. We would assess and see whether she's dorsiflexing towards 80 degrees approximately from the couch. It's close to it, but there's possibly a little bit of tightness in the calf muscles there. Next, we'll move to the angle of the sacrum from the couch, and I would put my hand up against Jade's back here and just feel the sacrum and look at that angle there and we can see that this angle is probably about 70 degrees. Now the norm should be 80 degrees from the couch and that's indicating that the hamstrings are short. That in turn draws the ischial tuberosities forward and of course tilts the sacrum back. If we then look at the lumbar spine, there is reasonable curvature there so that's an indication that there's reasonable mobility there, and if we look at the thoracic spine, there's also a good curve there. So I would assess Jade as having reasonably good mobility in both thoracic and lumbar regions, but being particularly tight in the hamstrings and a little bit tight in the calf muscles. Can we relax and just sit back? Okay. Okay with that? So if we then move on to checking hamstring length, and we'll start a fresh video from that point. So if you lie flat, okay. Draw breath for a minute. Just check if you're still in shot. Yeah, okay. Okay, so continuing on from some of the earlier assessments and in particular now looking at hamstring length, um, we would normally check uh, hip flexion with the knee straight as a means for assessing that, but there are certain things that we also need to check for when we're doing this. So I would pick my client's leg up like so, just keep a hand over the thigh to make sure that the knee stays extended and from this position just gently move to what we term as the first position of bind uh, or the first point of bind and I can see from Jade's face that we've reached that so that's certainly creating tension in the hamstring muscles as we're doing that. Now once again the normal angle of flexion um, for somebody with reasonably flexible hamstrings will be 80 degrees from the couch and again we haven't reached 80 probably about 65 or 70 degrees uh, from that position. However, if I just put Jade's leg down for a moment um, to make sure she's comfortable, we also need to consider the position of the pelvis when we're doing this. Now, if you have a client who suffers any sort of back pain and that movement is uncomfortable for them, um, usually it'll be in the lumbar region that they're feeling that, so I'm just feeling here and there's a little bit of a, a curve indicating reasonable low, low doses at the moment. But what I would do is deliberately flatten out the spine to try and make that more comfortable for Jade. And to do that, I will flex the opposite knee to about 90 degrees. 
that automatically has tilted the pelvis backwards and sure enough I now can't get my hand in that area. That in turn should make it more comfortable for Jade um, to have the opposite hip flexed. But what we must be aware of is that of course the leg will now go further into flexion or apparent flexion because the pelvis has been rocked backwards or posteriorly tilted. Hence the ischial tuberosity will have come round and that allows us to get more to what appears to be a normal position. So Jade now appears to have normal hamstrings but that's only because we have deliberately tilted the pelvis into a posterior uh, position. We take that back down. Again, uh, if somebody had an anterior tilt, um, if we literally tilt forward like so, so Jade's helping me by doing that quite deliberately, um, you can imagine as the pelvis rocks in this direction, so the ischial tuberosities move backwards, and now you'll see an even lesser range with Jade barely being able to get any sort of reasonable or apparent level of hip flexion before it starts to become uncomfortable. So even somebody with an anteriorly tilted uh, pelvis, let's just move you back into a comfortable position. Um, somebody with a standing position and an anterior tilt, that can transfer onto the couch even in a lying position. And so when we're assessing hamstring length, we just need to be very careful, A, about the comfort levels, and B, about exactly what you're measuring and understanding what the true levels of flexion should be. Mm -hmm. So we could continue on to firing patterns, just check that they're both still running. Yeah, it's seven minutes, so we haven't been too long. It's two fairly short videos. Okay, so... Problem first? Actually, I will stop them. We need to zoom, I think. Yeah, we're going to 